between neighbours. This time, it's Carlo taking on Leash. The first meeting at championship level between Carlo and Leash since 2006. Leash had won all four previous meetings, including the refixture back in 1995. And after Brian Murphy had put Carlo ahead, Leash leveled to Colm Kelly. Freeze from JJ Smith and Daniel St. Ledger restored Carlo's advantage, but Leash took the lead for the first time on 13 minutes as Damien O'Connor advanced in on the Carlo goal before setting up John O'Loughlin. Brian Murphy was Carlo's top scorer in the first half, a half of which six of Carlo's seven points came from Freeze. The only one from play in the first half for Luke Dempsey's side fell to Murphy, and he scored four of his sides total in the opening 35. Ross Munley and David St. Ledger traded scores in the early part of the second half before Carlo, who were guilty of some horrendous wides throughout the game, went in front again as a clever Murphy point, his fifth, put Carlo ahead. But they never scored again after that as Leash took control of the game and the introduction of MJ Turney gave Leash the impetus they needed. He put over two frees and then a point from play to put Leash three ahead, entering injury time. A late free from David Conway was the insurance Leash needed to see off Carlo's challenge. It wasn't a game of the highest quality by any means, but it was Leash who advanced on the scoreline of Leash 1-10, Carlo 9 points. And after the game, Luke Dempsey announced he was stepping down from his position as Carlo manager. I was always going to step down after my fourth year. I introduced Anthony Rainbow to, to the management team, and he's worked brilliantly with the Carlo players. I've had four great years in Carlo. I lived in Carlo from the time I was 10 to 20 years of age and played all my football there. So to go down was a labour of love. But I found that in my fourth year, the distance from Mullingar to Carlo has played a bit of a toll on me personally, so I've decided to call it a day in Carlo. Tipperary are through to the next round of the football qualifiers after a good five-point win over Offaly at Semple Stadium. In a very tight opening half, Philip Austin kicked the home side in front. before an informed Nigel Dunn landed the first of his three points to level the game on nine minutes. Then came a well-worked Tipperary goal after 16 minutes. Full forward Michael Quinlivan set up Peter Akerson to give his side a four-point lead. But awfully fought back. They kicked three successive scores, including this effort from Ken Casey. Peter Creedon's side had the chance of a second goal when Cork referee Conor Lane awarded an obvious penalty kick just on half time. However, Offaly goalkeeper Alan Mulhall saved the kick from the man he fouled, Quinn Niven, with Alan Maloney firing the rebound over the crossbar. It left the score 1-5 to 6 points at the break. Quinn Niven made up for his miss with the third of his four points just after half time. Then the home side got on top, kicking four unanswered points in a 10-minute spell like this fine score from substitute Brian Mulvihill. With Sleet and Hale now falling, the winners pulled further clear with efforts from Austin and Richie Ryan. Offaly gave themselves a glimmer of hope for the future by kicking the last two points of the game, including a fourth of the night from Ken Casey. As it ended, Tipperary one goal and 12 points, Offaly 10 points. Yeah, well, I suppose the reality is we're both two Division 4 teams, so there was never going to be much in the game. Um, we, were, we, we, we were expecting Offaly to come at us because you know, they had done quite well in patches against Kildare. But um, I think we had a 10 minute spell there in the second half and we got to be what, six or seven points ahead. I think that was the winning of the game really for us. The goal, I suppose, was was you know uh, when the scores weren't were an easy come by, a goal is a bit of a blow and it was a bit of a blunder in on our square. But um, you know at the end of the day we scored, uh, we did score enough you know, to win the match, and that's the bottom line, you know. Playing with the benefit of a strong breeze, London hit the front through full forward Owen O'Neill. But Antrim knocked out of the Ulster Championship by Monaghan racked up three unanswered points 
The third from Conor Murray came an early stranglehold on the match. With the momentum in their favour, Antrim tore through the London defence. Moss McCann, who got married on Friday, set up Aidan Gallagher, who should have buried it. But he atoned for that error less than three minutes later. Again, McCann was involved in the build-up. And this time, Gallagher was clinical. Gallagher had gone from villain to hero, and then back in the other direction after he copped up possession, allowing London to break. Neat exchanges in the build-up, and Kieran McCallion fired past Chris Kerr. And with seconds remaining in the half, London took advantage of some poor defending. And O'Neill put London 2-5 to 1-5 in front. Antrim got the second half off to a strong start. This Murray point, their third in a row, levelled it up. But this London side has shown character in recent seasons. Antrim native Sean McVeigh dominated midfield. And he kept them just up in front. But once more Antrim rallied. Wing back James Lockery gave them the lead in what was now an end to end encounter. But London weren't done yet and hit back with three points of their own. Mark Gotch's free put them two in front. The shock looked likely. But Antrim struck a hammer blow with seven minutes remaining. 